Hi, I'm Ashie, and today I'm going to talk about how to start and finish rows in crochet using different methods. And this is really important because doing this correctly actually sets you up for successful symmetry and those nice, smooth, even edges that we're usually searching for when we're crocheting. So when I started crocheting, this is something that I actually struggled with a lot. I would put my hook in the wrong spot. So I would end up with a different number of stitches and I would kind of increase and decrease and my project would end up being wavy and growing and shrinking. And um, I just also wasn't consistent in where I did it. So not only was I doing it wrong, I was doing it inconsistently wrong. So it made for a very um, poor outcome in terms of that finished edge look. So one thing to note with this video is I'm really only going to look at how to start and finish existing rows of crochet. So this does not apply to the very first row of crochet where you're working into the foundation chain. I have a whole separate video for working into the foundation chain that I'll link in the description below. So you can find that there and it's super detailed and in my opinion, extremely useful for working into the foundation chain. Even if you're not necessarily a beginner, there's some different variations and options that you can choose from. So check out that video after you watch this one. So briefly, um, we're going to talk about single crochet and then half double crochet. And those are what I'm going to give you demonstrations for. And then we'll discuss how that applies to double and treble crochet because the half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, they're all very similar in how you continue. Single crochet is pretty different. So that's why I'm doing single crochet separately but I'll do half double crochet and show you the different variations of chaining and how to start and end and where to put your hook actually to start and end each row with each variation of chaining. And then I'll also show a chainless method for turning. So let's jump in. So let's talk about chaining. The purpose of chaining is basically to get your next row up to the working height of that row. So that basically means that the height of the chain, this is the starting chain in terms of the row, not the foundation chain, but the height of this chain will depend on what stitch you're going to be using for the next row. Today, we'll look at the single crochet, the half double crochet, and the double crochet, and I'll kind of go over the standard way to do it and a couple of different variations. So first, this is a single crochet swatch. The standard way to crochet a single crochet is to chain one. So I'm going to demonstrate, and this is what I've done for this swatch so far. So chain one, then turn your work and single crochet into the first stitch there. So that's the last stitch of your previous row. And then you're going to single crochet in each stitch across. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then when you get to your final stitch of the row in this method, you need to put your single crochet into the first actual single crochet of your previous row. So you have to be careful. So for me, that's this one right here. Okay, and when I look at the top, I can see that little Y or V shape here that I insert my hook under. Okay. Now we have to be careful in this method not to add an extra stitch. So if you look at it, it looks like there's more crochet here that you should put a stitch in, but that is your turning chain. So you do not put a stitch into that turning chain or else you're gonna end up with the wrong number. So let's do that one more time. I chain one, I turn, and then I insert my hook into that final stitch of the previous row work in every stitch across. Once I get to the final stitch of the row, and I know I'm at the last one because I'm counting. So this is 10 single crochets across. I've done nine. So I'm going to put my 10th one here and I just have to trust that that is the final one, even though it looks like there's more here. That is a chain. It looks different. It's not a single crochet. We don't have any V shape there to put our hook under for inserting into a single crochet. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this one. And I'm not gonna weave in these ends. 
I'm just gonna finish off so that we can compare the swatches. Okay, so that's single crochet with a turning chain. And we went over both the chain itself, how to start, like where to put your hook in to the first stitch, my hair, and how to end or where to put your hook into the final stitch. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing for the variation, which is really the only variation that I've found on this one, is just to not do a turning chain. So let me get my swatch set up here. Okay, for a single crochet variation without turning chains. So this is the chainless variation. What we're gonna do is we're going to turn our work and then it's typically recommended to pull the loop that's on your hook just slightly larger than you would normally. So my normal tension is about there in terms of my teardrop shape you can see it and then I pull it up to maybe 50% more so it's not quite twice as big maybe half again or three quarters I don't know but after you pull that up just a little bit you just insert your hook into that final chain of the previous row just like you did with the the one with the turning chain and then you're working each stitch across and when you get to the end of the row, you'll find that you're going to insert your hook still in the same stitch. Basically, it's the first stitch of the previous row, okay? So when you look at it from the front, you kind of have this curved shape here, and that is your single crochet, because if you look at it from the top, you can see that V, okay? So I'm gonna insert my hook there under the V, just like I do for all my normal single crochets and finish my stitch, okay? So this one can be a little bit tricky because that last stitch, it's at an angle instead of um, horizontal. And then we're gonna do it one more time. So let's turn, pull that loop just up a little bit looser and work a single crochet in that first stitch and in every stitch across and when you get to the last one know that it's going to be at an angle but you're still going under that v the front and back loop of the stitches okay so there is the chainless method and again just going to cut that off and finish it off. Not going to weave in the ends. Well, I have different numbers of rows, but that's okay. So now we're just going to compare these two methods. Okay. And my job is not to tell you which is better and which is worse. I can tell you what I like better, but this is the method with the chain one and then turn. This is the method with no turning chains. Um, so I tried to keep my tension fairly consistent between the two swatches. They're almost the same size. Um, this one has one more row than this one, but regardless, doesn't matter. So the biggest thing that I note when I compare these two is that the turning chains kind of make this little wavy pattern on the end, which it's kind of cute. It's almost like a border built in without having to go back and do a border. And it's pretty consistent on both sides and you're getting that wavy pattern. The chainless method is a much squarer straight side compared to the chain. Um, if we look at the sides, um, you kind of get like a bump here where you see two strands and then it is flat and two strands and flat. It doesn't create like a big bump, but it's almost like getting a bar right there. This one, you don't really get that bar look um, when you're looking straight down at the side. It looks pretty much like it's uh, 
a line straight up and down. You don't have these little horizontal or perpendicular bars. Um, so again, you can choose whatever you like better. If you are going to make a pattern that says to do turning, turning chains and you don't want to, that's fine. It doesn't change the stitch count at all because you're, if you're doing turning chains, you're still working into the first stitch for your first stitch and the final stitch for your final stitch. That doesn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense, but it, it's not that helpful. So you're working into the same stitches, whether you do the turning chains or you don't. So if you're altering it because you like one more than the other, just change it. You don't have to change your stitch counts at all. Okay. So now let's look at half double crochet. For half double crochet, I've started up a swatch here with one of the turning chain methods. So there's more variations once you start getting into the taller stitches. So one option is to do turning chains and the kind of standard traditional turning chain for a half double crochet is two to chain two. So one, two. Now from here, there's two different variations as well. So the first one is that this turning chain will count as a stitch. If that counts as a stitch, then you do not put a stitch into this first hole. Okay. So you just skip over that final stitch of the previous row, because this is counting as the stitch that would be in that hole. So I'm going to yarn over and then insert my hook into the next one and do my half double crochet. And now effectively I've done two half double crochets and then I continue across. And then I'm getting to number nine and then number 10, because this turning chain counted as a stitch, I have to insert my hook into that chain. So I go to the second chain, insert my hook. Well, after I yarn over, insert my hook and do my half double crochet into that turning chain. So one more time, chain two, turn, that counts as my first stitch. So I'm skipping that first one, going into the second one and finishing a half double crochet there, working in each stitch across. Number nine is in the last actual double crochet stitch or half double crochet stitch. And number 10 goes into the top chain of the turning chain. Okay. Side benefit of this video is I'm using up a bunch of this yarn. Typically when I do swatches like this for videos, I don't cut it and I just save and reuse the yarn. But on this one, I am cutting it so that I can compare all the swatches, but I'm using up this giant skein of yarn that I don't like. It's not soft. It feels like rough and kind of scratchy. It's an acrylic yarn, very cheap one. And it was a huge like pound skein. So not upset to be getting rid of it in a useful video with little swatches that I will probably throw away after because I have no use for them. Well, if you come up with any use for a bunch of little crochet swatches, uh, that's not something that's like a blanket or something that I would wear because this is not a nice fabric at all. Um, but if you think of any ideas, let me know in the comments. So let me get my next swatch set up for another variation with the turning chains. Okay, so the next option with the half double crochet is that the turning chain does not count as a stitch. So our first, we did count the turning chain as a stitch. The next one we're going to say it does not count as a stitch. So I'm gonna chain two still and then turn. And instead of skipping this first hole, I'm going to insert my hook there, sorry get up under the camera. So instead of skipping this first hole, I'm going to insert my hook into that one. And that counts as one. The turning chain does not count as anything. And then I just work in each stitch across. And then that's nine. Now when I get to number 10, I insert my hook into the last half double crochet and then just ignore these turning chains. So the turning chains are Here's one, here's the second one. I ignore those. I go into 
this stitch right here under that V. Okay, so I didn't yarn over. Yarn over, insert my hook under the V, and finish my half double crochet. Okay, so again, chain two, turn, insert my hook into that very first stitch. I don't want to go into this chain at all, and I don't want to skip this first stitch and go to that one. So insert into the first, single crochet in each, not single, half double crochet in each stitch across. And when we get to the end, we half double crochet into the last stitch and ignore the turning chains. Okay. So there is another option. We'll compare all of these options at the end when I have them all side by side. So let me set up the next swatch for our next option. Um, these have the most options, basically, once you get into these taller stitches. Single crochet, there's really only two. After that, there's a bunch of options. I'm gonna show you them all so that we can compare them side by side. Next variation is to chain one instead of chain two. So I'm gonna chain one and then turn, and then there's two variations with chain one also, so we can use it as a stitch or we can not use it as a stitch. So first, if we're using it as a stitch, same with the chain two method, we skip this first hole, go into the second one, and that counts as two single or two half double crochets. The chain is a half double, and then that's the first, the second one. So that's two, and then I half double in each stitch across. And then number nine goes into this final stitch here, and then number ten goes into the chain. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that chain and do my 10th half double. So one more time, chain one, turn, skip the first stitch there, go into the second. That's two, three, four, working everyone across. When I get to nine, I go into this last actual stitch and then 10 goes into the turning chain. Okay. All right, so the next option is to chain one and have it not count as a, sing or as a stitch. So chain one, turn. Now I'm gonna do my half double crochet and I'm going to go into the first stitch this time. Again, I'm at this point ignoring the chain. The chain is only serving the function of getting it up to the height of the next row. And I'm just going in every stitch across. Okay. And then when I get to the end of the row, that was number nine out of 10, my final stitch goes into this angled half double crochet stitch here. So again, it's not a straight across one. It is a little bit angled or curved. Okay, let's do that again. So single crochet or chain one, turn, and then I'm going to go into that first stitch. I'm not gonna skip it. And that just counts as one. I don't count the chain as a stitch. And then the 10th one goes into this angled half double crochet. All right, getting there. Now, there's another option for taller stitches. So for half double crochet, double crochet, treble crochet, all of those, okay? And this option is called the chainless method. So I'm gonna set that up and then show you that. So final variation here for the half double crochet. 
I'm going to do what's called a chainless method. Now there are a few different chainless methods out there, um, but the best one that I've found is the one that I'm going to show you. If you want to YouTube other ones, that's fine. So don't chain anything, turn. Now in this very first stitch, we're going to put a single crochet. Okay, this is called stacked single crochet. So don't pull the loop up, don't do anything, no chains, don't loosen the loop, do your normal tension, and put a single crochet there. Now, we're gonna do one more single crochet, and we're not gonna, you know, pull it this way and go under the normal part of the stitch anatomy that we would. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the front of the stitch and we're going to insert the hook between, this would actually technically be the front loop if we were crocheting normal, but we're gonna go through the middle of these two loops, and then here, we're actually gonna go in the middle of those two loops as well. So let me get my yarn back on my hook, and I'm gonna insert my hook between those two and just under one loop and do another single crochet, okay? Now that counts as the first stitch, which makes sense because we worked it into that final stitch of the previous row. So then we just do a half double crochet in the next stitch and that counts as two. And then we just work in every stitch across. And when we get to the end of the row, we have number nine in the final like regular half double crochet stitch. And then the last stitch, we're going to crochet under this single crochet basically. So it looks just like a single crochet. And we're just gonna crochet into that top single crochet of the two that we stacked. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Just turn, no chains or anything. Insert the hook into that first stitch, do a single crochet, and then insert your hook between these two loops and just go under this one loop here and do another single crochet. Work a half double in the, each of the rest of the stitches across. And when you get to the last stitch, work it in that top single crochet of the two that we stacked. Okay, so now let's compare each of these techniques. So we have our chain two techniques. We have our chain one techniques. And then we have our chainless. Okay, so lots of different options here to look at. So let's compare kind of multiple ways. Here's our chain two, where the chain does count as a turning, or as a stitch. So you can see with this method, you do get some gaps in the edge of the project on um, alternating rows on both sides, basically. Um, that's the main, I guess, complaint with this technique, is that you get these gaps. The edges are pretty straight, there's not really any complaints there, it's really the gaps. Now, if you do the chain two and you do not count it as a turning chain, you get kind of the same thing that we got with the single crochet. You get a little bit of a wavy edge, okay? Everywhere that there is a chain two and then you're not counting it as a stitch, so then you're working in a stitch right next to it and it kind of bumps it out, okay? So then when you look at the chain one options, this is chain one where you do count it as a stitch, this one you do not. Now to me, these two, there's not a huge difference actually to me between these two. The edges are pretty straight on both of them. Um, you don't really see any big gaps like you do when you're chaining two. Um, maybe, you know, there's a slight gap right here compared to the other holes in the crochet stitch. Same with right here, where that um, turning chain one was. But overall, not huge gaps. And then this is where it does count 
as a stitch and the edges seem pretty straight to me. There might be a little, there's a tiny bump, I guess, where the chain is. Tiny bump, okay? But pretty similar. Now if I compare it to the similar chain two option, right? Chain two, where it is not counted as a stitch, you definitely get much larger um, scalloped edge look when you chain two versus chain one. And then same thing, you get much larger holes if you chain two and do not count it as a stitch than if you chain one and do not count it as a stitch. So that's a super simple way to change it. If you have those complaints with the chain two methods, just chain one instead of two and then work the pattern exactly how they said to work it in the in whatever pattern you're following. And then you have the chainless option. So this is called a stacked single crochet. And you can see here the edges, the edges are like perfectly straight. So if you want something that's going to have a perfectly straight edge on the end, um, I guess this is your option. I will say, I think there, there's still a tiny little bit of a larger hole between the first, you know, the stacked single crochets and the first half double crochet, but it's pretty minor and, you know, compared to the other holes in the fabric, maybe it's slightly bigger. Um, not a, not a huge difference though. So personally, I haven't done the stacked single crochets for a project, but now that I've done this swatch, I might, cause it does actually look extremely square, which is nice. I usually go for the chain one where it does not count as a stitch. So I chain one and then I do my first stitch into that <sighs> neighbor's dog is barking. Super annoying. Okay. So yeah, I usually do this one where I chain one and then do not skip any stitches or anything. And it gets pretty straight edges um, and no holes, but this definitely is straighter. So now um, I am not gonna go through all of this for the double crochet also. I was planning on it, but I'm not going to. Essentially it's the same. So for double crochet, instead of the standard. So we're gonna look at this top row, half double crochet, it was chain two. This would be chain three in double crochet, okay? So you would just chain three because the stitch is higher, okay? So you'd chain three in the standard way and then either skip a stitch or not, okay? And the results would look very similar to these two. In half double crochet, in if you're gonna choose a chain variation, instead of chaining two, or sorry, instead of chaining three, you'll chain two. So you just drop it one, right? So just like this, we chain two, and then in the variation, we just chained one. If this was half double crochet, you would chain three for kind of a standard and chain two for the variation. The chain list method for a double crochet is exactly the same as for the half double crochet. So you're gonna do the two stacked single crochets, okay? Now, you can just take that information and keep doing taller and taller stitches. So the next stitch would be a treble crochet, right? So half double standard is chain two, double standard is chain three, so treble standard would be chain four, okay? So you would chain four for if it was standard. If you're gonna do the variation, chain three. If you're gonna do the stacked method, instead of stacking two single crochets like you did for the half double or for the double, you stack three single crochets. And you can keep going up as high as you want, depending on how tall your stitch is gonna be. So that's the variations. And um, again, just so that everybody is on the same page, I'm using, woo, just so everyone's on the same page, I am using, American terminology for this. Um, so there is different terminology, American or UK. So this is all American terminology. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope you learned something and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe to my channel. I have a ton of other crochet content, informational videos, patterns, um, stitch tutorials. So check it out and have an awesome day.